Hello and welcome back to the channel. So in this video we're just going to do a bit of a post build review on this kit and this is just a kind of a placeholder. I've already uh, filmed all of this so uh, there will be a build video once I've got it painted. Uh, it'll probably be two parts but I think that's a little way off so I thought I'd just um, show you what the build was like and um, we can have a quick chat about it. So uh, I've done a little bit of work on this just to sort of make it a little bit more accurate but really just using what's in the box. So this this is the Dragon Kit of the Sherman Mark II, well the Sherman II, so it's the British Sherman II which is really one of the first production M4A1s, so uh, they were given to the Americans uh, straight off the production line and then um, they were then taken away and sent to the British uh, in the North African uh, campaign and then they were used in 1942 at the Second Battle of El Alamein. Uh, it's the one that went well, anyway. So these have an, a, a couple of interesting features to them, which makes them a little bit unique. Bit of photo etch fallen off. There's um, quite a lot of photo etch with this one, which is probably actually one of the, the complaints to it, but uh, we won't worry about that just yet. So a couple of identifying features. Uh, so th this one uh, is one of the first types of Shermans that um, the Brits had and this has got the early bogey style so so this is the VVSS suspension and um, unusually uh, it, the the return roller is vertical uh, later on there's um, it's, it's out the back here and then there's a kind of spade as well that, that lets the track run there's a few little changes um, one thing to note these little um, hooks here well not hooks uh, these are uh, loops here we're never, I've not seen a picture of them where they're on in the middle. They're always on the ends. And then it's just like this in the centre. So something to look out for. Uh, there was a seam line. Oh, the cupola's gone there. I put it on just to show you. But it, it, it's quite a loose fit. So we'll come back to that separately. There is a seam line on the wheels. Which I've actually uh, kept. Because I see it in the photos. And because these would be pretty much brand new. I've reinstated the, the seam line there. Where I've sanded it a little bit so uh, pretty happy with that I've put a little um, couple of nicks in as well and a few changes and it does incorrectly it should it should sort of, the arm should go up um, they do move just enough to sort of set them it's not not really the how the suspension should work but it there they are movable and that all helps when we put the tracks on and as we go round, there's a few things I've added to this one um, namely the casting marks as you can see that's the black writing and that is courtesy of uh, the now finished Archer company that I think they stopped now they're not producing stuff anymore but this is the resin casting marks in a couple of scales and there you go it's just like a normal decal well it is a normal decal they're just raised resin there's quite a few on there the um, foundry mark casting numbers actually in the right um, sequence. If you don't know that like the transmission has a certain number there, the turret has a certain number here, and um, the mantlet has a certain number there. Now I looked at a lot of reference pictures, and again, because these are early Shermans, it seems that some have got these casting marks and some don't. Like, there's certainly a couple of photos where there's no casting mark there. The Dragon Kit comes with the, the correct markings on either side. So this is basically, this is a, uh, I'm looking at it the wrong way around. So this is a right side, a left side and a centre section. And the centre section is that number that was missing. That's what I've added in just for a little bit of fun. Got a bit carried away. I mean, it's not a problem, but it always adds to the, um, adds to the effect. Some uh, different manufacturers do actually include these. I think... Um, Meng is pretty good. Tasker is, or Suka is very much like this dragon kit. There's some and then um, some missing and some on there. I'm trying to think now who else it is. Ryfield Model. Um, they do have quite a lot of casting marks, but then they only do certain Shermans at the minute. So all in all, I think it's, uh, it's a very nice kit. I've had these numbers here as well because I saw it on the reference. And what the main thing is, is it boils down to, in the kit you get a number of uh, marking schemes and all you've really got to watch out for from an accuracy point of view if you're concerned is two factories were building these early Shermans the ones that ended up at El Alamein came out of two factories uh, there was about 200 there was um, the M4 which is the welded hole uh, so it's the one with the straight sides. It looks more like the Sherman you see at Normandy um, with the straight sides and then it goes on to be the one like the M4A3 and all of that. So it's very boxy. Straight sides, welded hole, 
etc. That's the M4, and then this is the cast hole. So this whole section is, is cast, and this is the M4A1. So there were two batches of those, about 200, 250 that arrived initially, and they were built by Lima uh, Locomotive and Pressed Steel Car Company. So the thing to watch out for is those two factories did different things. So I've added this, uh, I've selected the markings, and I've done this as a Lima one. So for Lima, you this is a shorthand, you need an extra um, tow cable guide there, so I've added that. You also need tail lights, and uh, they're actually a little bit different, I'll show you those, I've made them out of scratch metal, and they were done like this, so they've got like a, like a twist. So they're a loop of metal, and then it's twisted and bent in, and welded onto the edge of the hole. And that's just how they were done, uh, temporarily. So I've added those on. It was also a welded hole, so uh, you've got a lot of bulk texture here, as you can see. That goes up the side as well. Um, so for a Lima one, I've just sanded off the bolts, because these plates were welded together. There's a couple of bolts there you see in reference photos. So what have we got? We've done the extra clamp, the tail light guards, the welded hole. There was something else as well I've had to do. Oh yes, it should also be rounded here. This plate is, is it at an angle, you can see there. It goes like there and then like that. Um, it would be rounded, so there'd be a little bit more of it. It'd be rounded like that. Now you can buy a resin back plate. I wasn't going to worry so much because no one's going to look under there. All I did was just round it off a little bit and, and didn't worry too much about the rest of it. And then that really corrects this kit enough so at a glance it is like one of the ones out of Lima. Then I've gone around and added a few other little things that I've noticed, which is like the casting marks, a few other couple of things, made sure I've got the right mantlet as well, because it's a bit confusing on the Dragon Kit. Of course, there's a lot of options in the Dragon Kit, and we know about Dragon Instructions, how they can be confusing. They give you options for the mantlet, so you just need to try and find you a picture of the one you're using and use the correct thing. One of them's got guards sticking out like this, and you see them a bit later. Uh, let's see if I've got a picture. It's not actually a great deal of, um, here you go, in this book. That's one of the welded ones. So we called that, I believe, a Sherman 3. The, the M4A1 is the Sherman 2 and the M4 is the Sherman 3. You see it's still got the early bogey. So this is one of the initial productions, like this one. Would have come over. This is the scheme we're going to be doing it in, like that. The Ninth Lancers. Sort of a disruptive camo f scheme. Um, but you you can see on the mantlet that it's not got those shrouds to it. None of them have. They haven't got the shrouds. They're very much like the one I've just shown you. There's another picture as well. So that's all. You know, there's plenty of pictures online. There's a great website. I'll link them down below. So the what inspired this is that there's a good feed on um, Brit Modeler on the forum. Where a chap's gone to town. A couple of guys have worked out which ones were being used and, and what they what the differences were and then that is um, added by um, another website it's a basically a Sherman website I'll put the links down below for the forum post and the um, Sherman website which is very useful uh, and you can get around it and find out a lot of the interesting things um, and a couple of nuances the good thing is all the pits you need are in the kit apart from the tail light guards and um, even here I had to change these out. There's three or four different options. These were actually, it turns out, these are called uh, Gausers, I believe. I think it is. Um, it's all very confusing to me. And they were different shapes. And what happened here is they were actually welded together at a different place. So after the tank was made, these were then welded up at a um, sort of holding place. And so they're all a bit ad hoc. So I've managed to spot the actual tank I'm doing zoomed into the picture and I can see that it's curved. Other ones are flat. Um, it's kind of angled, I mean. So yeah, all in all, very interesting. Um, one downside to this kit, it's, a, it's an upside really. You get a huge photo etch set and you get the side fenders. But these are all photo etch and they're an absolute nightmare to put together and they've got perforated um, seams for bending. Uh, so that means you end up with a load of holes which aren't there. So you need to fill them really. So you've got you've got the front fenders, the rear fenders, and then you get the center sections, which are incorrect. I've just 
put them off of I can't quite reach them but they've got bolt detail and a oval hole cut out which is the later that's the sort of Normandy um, type and it's so that they can be placed easier on different Shermans so instead of trying to sand all that off all I did was just cut these out of plastic card you've got a bit of a bend but they'll come fine you've got these little ribs here which is what it sits on and actually it's pretty good if you can just leave a little bit of a gap just to show them I can't quite do it but it would be like that because you do see them through the joint they're just kind of like attached on now the good news is these photo etch fenders do fit quite well I've got them ready for primer that's another problem I've had as well as soon as you sand the metal uh, it's very hard for that you, you can just see it on the primer so I need to um, try and blend them in a bit but they will go on nicely he says I have test fit all this all of this to make sure it's good they kind of tuck in under there but you can see how it's a bit finicky I would have at least liked the option for plastic because plastic would have been fine really because you're not going to see it doesn't matter how thick it is but they sort of sit up like that and then you put the rear fender on similarly and then you put the center section on so you just got to go with that because they, they have to have them they didn't take them off they use them they're sand shields really so um that's a little bit disappointing because in later kits these front fenders they do have in plastic uh, you've got then the rear the sort of uh, British edition which is a toolbox goes on the back there there's the sprockets and then you've got these rails now I've only just in researching a little bit for this video realized that these I thought they were just rails that the British put on for um, stowage well, no, that's that's kind of a um, a happy coincidence afterwards. These are for the... Um, it actually goes around the other way, so we get the right one. So these are welded to the side of the hole like this, and across that front fender. And they're for the staging, where they put the poles in, to turn these into, um, like, trucks to put all the canvas over, which is what, you know, Monty and... and um, and the British did in the desert to try and fool Rommel um, as they were moving the tanks around uh, to make them look like trucks. So then when they took them off, they left the rails and uh, the tank crews just covered them in bags and stuff hanging off them. So I've actually got, with a whole load of stuff lying on it, I've got this set from Mini Art. So it's like this, it's exactly like this. We're just going to hang that off. So uh, that's a nice touch. And they weren't too bad as photo etch actually pretty simple as they would be there's no curve so it's easy you just sort of bend them around super glue them on again using um photograph references to make sure they're in the right place because it's a little bit vague and the dragon instructions etc 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 i've used a bit of 3d printed stuff instead of etch for the light guards on the front so this is the mg miniatures set that i've got i've also used their clasps as well because you get these in photo etch so I've changed out all the tool clasps which is very effective obviously just super glue them in I've left the holes for where they're meant to go for easier placement so for instance this would go on I, d I don't think it goes there but like that so that we glue in the plastic bit in the hole and then the resin just gets touch down it might even I might not even super glue it I might just use the fixing point there to glue it in and then kind of maneuver it down so it holds it like that much easier than doing dobs of super glue um, I also needed to change out I had a, a sprue left over from an old Tasker M4 and I managed to get these towing hooks uh, because at the front you've got the kind of they're, they're, they're the odd ones I don't know where they've come from I think they're a later version but it should have these so you only get two in the kit for the rear so I've changed them over I've actually broken one but I'm sure I can fix it and I managed to raid a uh, horn as well which has come off that tasker kit I think this is the early type horn and then that goes on the front fender on this side. Bit of a different place. So all in all, that's all the little bits. So let's get into the um, last section that tanks always need. And that is 
the tracks. So this is a good kit. This is a reproduction, um, a repop of it, which comes with the magic tracks. Um, these are the T48s, are they? 54s? Something like that. They're the standard track anyway, the rubber pad track. Um, and I've had to sand these, although, you know, they are magic tracks, they're very good, but they had ejector pin marks in the middle. So I've just sanded every single one, which actually didn't take that long. Probably an hour, all told. And I just did a little bit now and again, audio book on, didn't worry about it. Um, so they're going to be very good. They go on nicely around the sprocket. And good old Dragon is giving you, you see you've got two different colours in two different bags so this is your main set of track and then these have got the teeth just angled slightly as you can see just offset a little bit for going around the sprocket to give you the correct angle so the track pad will be level and he says why don't they fit in right there so the track pad's where it's meant to be, and then the horn, the guide horn, the tooth, whatever you want to call it, is flat, you see? So, and the pad's just drooped. So that's um, there to go around the idler and any curves, basically. So that's a nice touch. Now, Dragon Shermans, where are we? I like them. I really like them, actually. I think it's probably my favourite Sherman kit. If I hadn't have done a lot of messing about, I would have got this built probably in about 10 hours. It was that simple. Everything went together. There was no messing about. Everything was really simple. Where this one got bogged down, I must say, was on the photo etch fenders. That was quite a lot of work, uh, but not a, you know, not a major problem. Obviously, I've added a lot of extra bits as well. Um, in later marks of, of the Sherman that they do, you don't need to add it. A lot of the casting marks appear where they're meant to, but again, that's not really a ma massive issue. So the problems are specific to this one. Probably the Sherman Mark III would suffer as well um, from the same problems. Now, Dragon, a kind of a funny company at the minute. When I started off, uh, kind of 2005, they were the company to have. Every box was brilliant. It came with a huge set of extras. You'd get individual tracks, usually metal barrels, um, loads of photo etch, loads of little bent pieces. So these um, handles and stuff would already be bent. I've added them in myself by copper wire. A lot of this complex photo etch might have even been done as well. You'd get these already pressed. Brilliant. Almost too good. And then we sort of go on through and they change up a little bit and you, you get less metal, more plastic, but it's still pretty good. And then we get the DS tracks. And that for me is where we went sort of too far the wrong way. DS tracks are like a uh, their version of a vinyl rubber track, but it, I don't know, they're, they're, they're made out of a material that, for me, every time I've used them, they either disintegrate after about six months, or they're already ruined in the kit. Um, they used to come in a bag, and you'd get a strip of them, and they'd just be all perished, or it's like all the oil comes out of them. Really strange. So that put me right off, because you, you, the prices went up as well. And you're starting to get kits at around sort of 50, 60 pounds and you need to get a set of tracks for them. And you think, oh, it's just too much. Just too much. For me, if I wanted to put everything into a Sherman like this, 50 sort of quid is where I'm looking for. This kit was 38 on discount at Jadlam. Now that's perfect. What could, and, and it also comes with magic tracks that now they're putting back in to these models they're not something to discount i see a lot of people taking the mickey online at quite quite rightly because it's kind of like there's a lot of companies that are coming up and pass them now but if you keep an eye out some of the dragon kits are pretty good i've got the firefly mark 1c now the only other kit of that i know is uh, a suka and that comes with rubber tracks and it's about the same price and i've got it for about 63 pounds and it comes with magic tracks and 3d printed duck bills so we'll have a look at that i'm going to do a review of it shortly it's probably to follow this one that's a good kit now if you pick it right it you can you can you can find the right kit um it's the ds tracks that put me off so i'm happy that dragon's sort of around now back as a company and um another option to your Ryefield and your Meng. I've got the Meng Jumbo, I've built the Ryefield uh, Firefly 5C, so I do like my Shermans, I do like the early ones, the M4A ones, and I've always wanted to do a desert one, so I'm happy with this. That's a little debrief on Dragon Shermans, and I just want to show you finally that I've built the Mini Art Bantam, which is going to go as a scene. So I've got a couple figures, I'm going to have the tank like that, I'm going to have the Bantam up here, probably with the windscreen down, 
two chaps here, one with a cup of tea, just giving a kind of little bit of a debrief before they go on to do the next thing. This is the Mini Art Bantam. The less I say of this, the better. Um, I don't want to trash Mini Art, they've got enough problems going on at the minute, but I found that quite a tricky kit to put together. Lots of flash, uh, lots of mismolds, misalignment molds, um, but persevered here it is uh, i had to undo the suspension because it was it was so out that none of the wheels would touch so when i put the wheels on and i get them level i'll super glue this up wherever it lands it's a shame but it's nice to have the bantam's a nice looking jeep odd looking one compared to the willys jeep bit boxier bit more british looking so um that's a nice touch so that's what the scene's going to be this is a project that will be coming down the road not sure how long but hopefully i will get this one up before too long it's been a very interesting build i hope that was an interesting video and if you're thinking about dragon kits have a good look because they don't always you've got to kind of hold the kit in your hand to know what's in the box it sounds really strange because they use stock images online so if in doubt ring up the model shop ring up the company or do a bit of work on scalemate see if you can find any new reviews and modern instructions because often again they're using the ones from the re the pre-release because nowhere have i seen the firefly that i'm talking about uh with the 3d printed duck bills actually on the stock image uh, but when you see the kit in your hand you can see it's on the box and you can see what's in there so just a heads up um let me know your thoughts on dragon kits i'm i was 50 50 i'm probably more 70 30 in favor of them now so uh, uh, that's a good thing but yeah so this project will be coming down the line with a few other brick tanks um staying in north africa at the minute it seems which is very enjoyable maybe because it's so cold here uh but there we are um thanks for watching stay tuned and i'll see you in the next video